you want to set up an indoor golf sim, it's important that you have the right space for it. In this video, I'll make it easy for you to find out if the space you have is big enough to work for the kind of setup that you are going for. And if you stick around to the end, I will tell you how everyone said my space wouldn't work and I proved them wrong. By the way, this whole channel is dedicated to indoor sims and golfing, so if you like this video, check out the other ones in this series that go over every step of the process for setting up your sim. Two of the most important things to consider before you decide to build your own home sim is whether you have enough space and whether you have enough money in your budget to be able to buy one. Now, in this particular video, we won't be talking about the cost, so if that's something you want to think about first, check out this video, but for now, Let's talk about whether your space is big enough to be able to build your own home sim. How much it all depends on the kind of launch monitor that you end up picking. So it's really important that you think about what you're gonna end up going with so that you are making sure that you have the right space for the setup that you are gonna be going with. To make things easier to be able to explain, I'm going to be referring to this two scale 3D model of what my current setup looks like. I've been building this over the last two years and I've been able to fine tune it and make it work perfectly for my situation. To keep things consistent, we'll be talking about the space in front of the ball and the space behind the ball that's required. For example, Mevo recommends that you have eight feet from the ball where you hit it to the net or the projector screen. Also, you need to have eight feet behind the ball, which is gonna be between the launch monitor and where you're hitting it from. Now, if you don't know what I mean by the Mevo, definitely check out the other videos on this channel where I talk about the different kinds of launch monitors that you can choose from for your setup. The next in line we have is Garmin, and Garmin also recommends the same distances. You need eight feet in front of the ball and you have eight feet behind the ball to be able to get accurate results. And lastly, we have the GC Quad, and the GC requires that you have 12 feet in front of the ball, but you don't need any space behind the ball. Now sure, you might need some space to be able to walk around it, but the actual launch monitor itself does not require space behind the ball like the other ones do. The next big thing to consider is the ceiling height. And most of these companies actually recommend that you have about eight and a half feet of ceiling height or more to be able to play. Now I'll say right off the bat that this is not realistic because most people have a ceiling height of approximately eight feet, maybe even a little bit less. I can tell you from my personal experience that playing with a ceiling which is exactly eight feet, I've been able to play just fine. Now, you have to keep in mind that if you do have an eight foot ceiling, you may from time to time hit the top of the ceiling with your club. Not a whole lot, but you might just barely nick it. So keep that in mind because I think that a lot of people, they don't like to mess up their clubs. So if you're really particular about making sure your clubs are in pristine condition, definitely keep that in mind. You may want to increase the ceiling height to be able to play if your ceiling is about eight feet. I should say though that over the course of time, I did end up taking out a portion of the drywall ceiling in my garage just to give myself a little bit more space to be able to play with. So now I have a ceiling height of approximately eight feet, four inches. It's also important to keep in mind that some people just won't be able to feel comfortable swinging the club with a low ceiling. So if you have a standard ceiling height, keep in mind that you may be one of those people, think about it, and if it's gonna be an issue, then you may wanna consider doing something with the ceiling height before you move forward. Worst case scenario is that you have to modify the trusses. If you have a low ceiling and you have to increase the height, and the only thing you could do is to take out the sheet rock and then change the spacing of your trusses, then you may have to consider modifying the trusses to make it work so that you have a little bit more space above where your ceiling is now. And this takes a little bit more work. If you are a hands-on person, you may be able to work around this yourself, but if not, keep in mind that it might cost you some money to be able to hire out the work and have somebody modify your ceiling to make it work for you. That's it for this video, guys, and thanks for watching. But if there's anything you think I missed or if you want me to cover any other topics, please let me know in the comments below. I hope you like this video and if you do if you could just quickly like and subscribe i would greatly appreciate it because that's going to help this channel be able to make more content just like this thank you